So hi guys, uh, welcome to another video. This is quite different. Uh, this video is supposed to go up actually uh, about three to four months ago because that's when uh, the TV arrived. I was supposed to be talking about it immediately it arrived, but laziness and other stuff. It supports 4K, uh, has a UHD processor, supports HDR10+, plus, uh, comes with smart things from Samsung. Uh, it's a way to connect multiple devices in your house, so you could connect your speakers, your everything. It's a slim design. Uh, Samsung really wants you to know it's a real 4K resolution. Uh, I don't know if this fits the camera. Uh, has AirPlay, so if you have Apple devices, you can cast directly to the TV very easily. Uh, has HDMI RC, I think that's the name, so you can control both audio and video from one HDMI cable. Uh, Samsung sells the HDMI cable separately. Uh, that's the front, uh, that's the certified UHD. Uh, it, has, it complies with the UHD certification from whoever certifies that. The knife is still here. Okay. Oh, the TV is heavy. I should not let it fall there. There you go. So this is not, I, I don't know how to just do a full review. Uh, I guess I'll learn that as I talk about more TVs in the future. But yeah, it's a 4K display, HDR, uh, 49 inch. What else do you say about the TV? Uh, at the back, there is an ethernet port, uh, three HDMI ports, two USB ports. Uh, there's an optical audio port. And I guess that's it. There's no... Uh, you do not get the normal uh, visual audio ports you get on other TV on all the TVs. So if you have uh, like an older woofer or something, you'll have to buy a converter uh, because it only has an optical audio out cable. Uh, what else? Uh, the bezels, uh, they don't look that big. Uh, the display, uh, I'll talk about that in a bit. And yeah, so why would you get a iu 700 series instead of getting uh, another tv from another brand because as you'll see when you check online this tv is expensive when you compare it to tvs from skyworth tcl and other brands uh one because it's samsung two because maybe it's the display panel they're using three it's because uh people think of samsung as being more expensive so most times they'll sell their devices as more expensive i guess but uh these are the couple of reasons why uh, you can get this over other brands. So the first thing I really like is the display quality. Uh, it's a 4K panel. There's a difference between just being 4K and also supporting HDR. So it supports HDR content. And if you play HDR content mostly from Netflix and from other uh, providers like Prime Video, uh, play content that's HDR, you'll notice a shift uh, in the display when it's playing. Uh, I've read reviews online uh, that the HDR capabilities are not very good, so it doesn't reach max, uh, the very high brightness levels that are needed for very good HDR. But watching it at home and using it, uh, you feel like it's a really nice display. So when you're buying a TV and you want a HDR display, consider uh, checking uh, reviews online on how good the HDR is. Uh, I'm not saying the HDR is bad, I'm just saying, uh, Many reviewers say it's not the best of HDRs and I won't be in a position to tell that because this is the first HDR display I'm experiencing at home. Uh, I've seen HDR displays in the shops and all that, but they look different. Uh, the other thing that you will want to consider, especially with the price, is that uh, there is TVs uh, I've seen, uh, but smaller inches that have OLED displays at this price. So if you want an OLED display with very high contrast and very good HDR capabilities, uh, this is not one of those. I've also seen uh, Samsung has brought in their QLED TVs. They are quite pricier, but uh, they offer better image quality and better colors and all that. Another thing I've liked with the TV is that uh, there's an HDMI ARC port at the 
back. So one of the HDMI ports supports ARC, uh, which means you can communicate with your gadgets through that one port. So if you have uh, if you have a, a sound system that uh, can make use of that, that would be really good. Uh, if you have uh, uh, third-party connections that you want to use there, for example, gaming consoles and all that, the HDMI AI support works really well with that. Another thing that's really good is, uh, not really good, the, the other thing that's good before I talk about the bad things is that the remote uh, on the Samsung TV, on this remote can control other gadgets so for example when linked to uh, the Mi Box I still get to use this remote to uh, maneuver around Mi Box interface so I don't have to touch the Mi Box uh, remote to maneuver around it when it's connected to the TV the bad thing though is that this remote is very boring I think this is the most boring remote I've ever used uh, it has so much going on so many buttons navigating with it is a problem because all the keys feel the same it's very annoying uh, and I find myself really hating the experience of using this remote and I wish Samsung made a simpler remote uh, if you've seen the Mi Box remote it only has a, f a few couple of buttons and it works uh, this is a very stressful remote to use and in as much as it's one remote for everything I wish it was a simpler interface just the buttons and a couple of things i don't need all these numbers i've never used them actually i don't think anyone needs them unless maybe you connect it to dstv and you want to change uh, will it work i'm not even sure but this remote is annoying uh in terms of uh what you get from uh, Tizen OS, uh, you get YouTube, a couple of Netflix, uh, a, a couple of entertainment apps like Netflix, uh, Showmax and all that. But I realized that they are really locked in in Kenya. So if you just launch the TV and access the Samsung store that's on the TV, you'll find very few apps that you actually need. And some of them are very uh, weird apps from India and other countries, but they're very few. I found a way to unlock the TV or rather to lie to the TV that you're in another part of the world. So I put my location as US and all of a sudden there's so much on the TV and so many apps that you can access and so many things that you can do with it. So I think Samsung should make all their TVs be able to access most of the apps that are already uh, legal to access uh, in Africa or rather in Kenya because I couldn't find Apple Music, which is in Kenya and supported on Samsung TVs when I was using it as a, in the Kenyan location. But immediately I switched to uh, another location. Apple Music was available and it is running uh, the way it's supposed to run. So there's a couple of apps that are supposed to be accessible, but they're not accessible uh, because of certain reasons I don't understand. But once you do that tweak, you can access them. And it's very good to access Apple Music on the TV compared to casting uh, from your phone or rather to the Mi Box or to something else. So uh, there's very many instances where I'll just use Apple Music directly from the TV and it's good. So uh, a couple of things that I wanted to add are that uh, the 700 series, the RU700 series has a couple of uh, different sizes. So I've seen there's a 43 inch, there's a 50 inch, there's a 58 inch, there's a 75 inch, there's a 55 inch. Uh, when you're buying a TV, uh, consider the size of your house to just don't get the biggest because people believe the bigger TV is better. But also uh, just get a TV that fits your size uh, or works good in your house. Uh, the best things about the TV in terms of just performance is that uh, there's very little input lag. Uh, you, uh, as with a remote, with uh, with other interfaces, if you connect other accessories and all that, everything works well. Uh, the thing uh, I've enjoyed most with it is that even when you're watching stuff and it's connected via Bluetooth, you don't feel like there's much of lag. Uh, there's also a, a, like an easier way for you to interact with very many things. Uh, I don't feel like uh, the interface is very stressful and I like the interface even though I wish it were Android TV. The things that uh, I've already mentioned are that uh, the HDR as I've read on a couple of reviews is not very good. Uh, I don't know how, how HDR is measured. I feel like it's pretty bright. Uh, something that I've noticed rather myself is that if you try and see it uh, at an angle that's not very direct to the TV, the image quality degrades. So for example, directly 
you can see very good picture quality but uh, if somebody sits uh, like at a distance from the TV or at an angle from the TV, the quality is not really good. Uh, the best things to use this TV for actually are very uh, different. Uh, you can have it uh, in a vertical, is it vertical or horizontal? You can have it in a vertical mode and use it, it supports that. Uh, it is very good as a PC monitor because of the very uh, fast way it interacts. Uh, input lag being very minimal makes it a very good PC monitor. If you want to have a 49 inch PC monitor, it's good. Uh, if you uh, connect your PC to the laptop via HDMI or anything, uh, it scales up really good. Uh, the sharpness and the viewing is okay and it works really good. Another good thing that I've seen from reading the reviews is that the HDR capabilities in gaming are quite good. Uh, very many reviewers rate it quite well in gaming with HDR. I've seen that it is rated very well for video gaming, normal video gaming if you have a console and all that. I've seen that it's rated very well for uh, watching sports. Uh, so if you're somebody who, watch, who watches a lot of sports, uh, it's rated quite well for that. Uh, the thing that I've seen that it is not highly rated, though it's rated quite well, is uh, in movies. And most of you will be buying this TV for movies, so I don't know why uh, most of the re reviewers feel like the movie rating is, uh, it, like the movie reproduction is not really good, but I feel like I've watched a couple of movies with it and it's quite good for me. So yeah, uh, those are the things that you should consider when getting the RU700 series. Uh, whether it's the 49 inch or the 75 inch, I think the panel is the same. I like that it supports HDR, which is something people don't really consider. I've seen people buying TVs and nobody really checks if it's a HDR display. I feel like HDR is really important, especially with Netflix content that supports HDR. Uh, I feel uh, the sound quality from the TV is not good at all. So it is good, yeah, compared to a uh, normal TV and other the basic TVs, yes, but you can't watch movies on this, you can't watch, uh, you can't listen to music through this, you'll have to have an external audio source. Uh, if it's a legacy type of woofer where you'll buy uh, a converter for the optical out cable because there's no way to get audio out of it unless you use the optical out cable or a HDMI cable. You'll have to do that either way because without that you won't get good audio. The audio from the TV is not really good. And yeah. Those are the best things about the TV. Oh, one more thing is that the remote works uh, well, whether you point it on the other direction or not. I feel like um, most remotes you have to point it directly, but this one just works even if you point it from another direction. So for example, we are pointing it opposite from the TV and it's responding. So yeah, that's it. Uh, tell me your thoughts on the RU700 series of TVs from Samsung. Uh, next time we're talking about a different TV that's much cheaper than this but has a bigger display and uh, we'll see what you think about that. Subscribe.